And so he comes to one local inn that's right next to him. And he comes in, and he asks the man, have you got any rooms? And the man says, I have one room. But the only thing is, is there is a sick man in there, and the room is divided by a parishioner, a, a curtain that separates the two rooms. And the other man is sick on the other side, and he's coughing all night. And it may irritate you. Do you still want the room? And Adoniram's like, yes. Because all Adoniram wanted to do was sleep. So Adoniram gets in there, and he hears the awfulest fit he's ever heard. He hears all this coughing, all this wheezing. He hears a man on his last death rows. And Adoniram starts thinking about the demise of this man. And Adoniram kind of jumps back for a second, and he goes, why am I thinking about this? Why am I thinking about this man's demise? I am a deist. Why am I supposed to, th why am I even thinking about this? What would my friend Jacob Ainson say about me, you know, wondering about death of this poor man on the other side of the curtain? But Jake, but Adoniram couldn't, he couldn't help himself. He had to think about it. And so finally, Adoniram has a sleepless night, wakes up in the morning and, and, uh, he goes to the innkeeper, and he asked about the, the man on the other side of the curtain. How, how is he? Is he all right? I heard him all night. You know, is this man okay? And he says, uh, no, I'm sorry, sir. He passed away in the night. Um, he was a young man by the name, uh, went to Brown University by the name of Jacob Ainson. So that was actually his dearest friend who passed away. And this just hit Adoniram like a big old rock. And all Adoniram could think about was hell, death. Hell, death. Hell, death. That's all he could think about. He's like, my deist beliefs better really check out. I better really know where I'm going when I die. I better really make sure that what I believe is true or else I'm going to be like my friend Jacob Ainson. And so, through a long process, like I said, Adoniram is this kind of intellectual guy. It didn't happen overnight for him. But through this long process, he goes to Andover Seminary. They still let him in, even though, you know, he hasn't exactly professed to be a Christian yet. But while at Andover Seminary, he does profess to be a Christian. And not only this, they don't tell much about his life between him being a Christian and to his calling, but he gets a calling to go overseas. Now, when you got a calling to go overseas, back then you had to know that you were a very unique person because you would be one of the only one people to go over there, to go over to a foreign place. You would have to drum up support when there's been no talk of missionary action. You would have to do all kinds of things, and you're the only one pioneering the way to do this. Can you imagine how scary that is to, to be going over to a foreign land where we don't have those vaccinations like we do now? There would be no malaria vaccination. There would be no dysentery vaccination. There would be none of this. And you're going over to a foreign country that has all these weird diseases and foreign languages. And that's what Adoniram wanted to do. He had that zeal for God that he wanted to remove himself from this comfortable place of North America and go overseas. Now, after a month, now hear me, I just said a month of dating, he dated somebody for a month and decided to marry them. And this isn't the only extraordinary thing. Not only this, he wants his wife, of course, to go with him to India. That's where his burden is, is for India. Adoniram wants to go to India. So, this is what he writes. Anne's parents asking, you know, to marry Anne. Now, I can imagine at saying this to any father. Listen to this. I have now to ask whether you can consent to part with your daughter early next spring, to see her no more in this world, whether you can consent to her departure, to her subjection, to hardships, and suffering, and missionary life, whether you can consent to her exposure to dangers of the ocean, to the fatal influences of southern climate of India. 
to every kind of wanting desire and degradation, insult, persecution, perhaps a violent death. Can you consent to all this for the sake of, of him who left his heavenly home and died for, for her and for you, for the sake of perishing immortal souls, for the sake of Zion and the glory of God? Can you do this? Can you imagine asking a father that? Can you imagine after dating somebody for a month and you're a woman and you're wanting to marry this man and you're willing to uproot, uproot your, your life and go with this man to India? She had a zeal for the Lord too. She was actually at Andover Seminary too and you see this was part of her calling too. And her father, believe it or not, let her go. So that's just an amazing. So you see some dying here. Adoniram had to die to live in North America in a safe, comfortable place. Anne had to die to maybe having a good old American life of raising children in America and, you know, maybe occasionally have a job. Um, she had to die to that. Her fa and Anne's father had to die to having her daughter, his daughter, safely with, with him. Um, Adoniram's parents had to die to the prospect that Adoniram would never be seen again. In 30 years, Adoniram left home and for 30 years didn't come back to his parents' house. So they take off to India. This is on ship. This is maybe a six-month journey. I said six-month journey to India on ship. I know that. I mean, it's hard for people sometimes. You get seasick real easy. Can you imagine being on a ship for six months? And no cure for seasickness if you happen to be sick. No little pill or anything you can take. Uh, that would be pretty hard. So they arrive in a place called Rangoon, India. They stay there for a while. And you see... Adoniram's main mission is to take the Bible and translate it into the uh, language there in Rangoon. He wants to translate the whole Bible so that they can understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. They can't understand the Bible at all. They don't have the Bible in their language. He's translating the whole thing. And so that is a very long, tedious process. But that's what Adoniram does. And he actually does it so often that his eyes get weary. He can go 10 hours at a time translating the Bible, and his eyes would get blurry from just um, his eyes watering. His, his wife, Anne, has a child, and she's actually nursing her child. And while she's nursing her child, she is translating the Bible, too. She's a very smart woman that can translate the Bible, too. So she's translating the Bible. And that's what they're there for. But they get kicked out of Rangoon, India by the East India Trading Company because they're foreigners and they just didn't like them there. And so they sail to Burma. India is the next place they go. And after being in Burma for a while, Anne has to leave because she's very sick. And what they do in those days to cure sickness is to take you out onto the open sea and they think that fresh air will help you get over your sickness and so that's what they did for Anne and Anne pleaded and said Adoniram don't come with me now Adoniram didn't know how long this would be six months a year he didn't know how long it would be till his wife was um, healed again I mean until she was well again enough to come back over to India he didn't know I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be all alone in India, to be all alone in that foreign land and not have the support of a wife, not have that loved one there, that one to share all your, your personal stories, to share your day with. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to have my wife missing for that long. And we, we just, you know, newly, newly married. But, um, I just, I, I can't picture what it would be like. And for her to be sick at that and to be missing and not to hear from anything. They don't have Facebook or anything like that back then. They don't have 
cell phones. There's no way of contacting them. The only way they have is the good old-fashioned mail system, and they had to depend on that to be overseas mail. And so he didn't get a correspondence for 10 months from Anne. 